the dust. And that's it. That's it. That's the whole chapter. Now, let's work at level one really quickly. Jot down a summary of what you just read. What would you say? What will you concentrate on in terms of summarizing this kind of bit of prose? Well, one of the things we might say is that this is really nothing more than just a simple description. In other words, the writer, Steinbeck, is just simply describing the journey of a turtle who goes from one side of the road to the other, and he has to overcome all kinds of you know, trauma to be able to survive. Okay? Now, that's what this is about. That's level one. Let's ask at level 2A, what does it mean? Now, here we're going to go back to our word allegory. We're going to go back to our notion of symbolism. Grapes of Wrath is a novel about a family, the Joad family, who constantly are struggling to stay alive. It seems like the forces of nature and the forces of society are both trying to work against the Joad family to destroy it. But the family refuses to give up. The family refuses to quit. Knowing that, you don't even have to have read Grapes of Wrath. I can just tell you that's what the novel is about. Knowing that, jot down here really quickly, what is for you one major message from this reading? Is there an idea that comes to mind as a theme or a message? Some students have said, this little turtle is representative, symbolic, of desire, of guts, of hard work or tenacity. The little turtle that represents whatever happens, never give up. Rely on your own ability and self to somehow overcome all problems. You can do this if you are willing to work hard. You see. Another possible message or theme is the inevitability that struggle is coming. Right? It's just a matter of time before you know what's going to happen when that turtle gets up on that highway, right? There's going to be first a woman who swerves and about kills herself to not hit the turtle, and then there's going to be somebody driving a, a truck who would, you know, hey, dude, let's try and hit the turtle, and instead of crushing the turtle, just kind of knocks it on across the highway. But the turtle, again, lands on its back, figures out a way to get kind of back up on its feet, and off it goes again. Uh, number three, let's also point out at 2A that this is not, did you notice this? This is not a young turtle. Notice Steinbeck. He's playing a very interesting game here. He's saying, this turtle has seen a few things, right? The color of its toenails, the humorous old eyes. And if you look, of course, closely at turtles, they kind of have this geriatric feel or old person feel to them anyway, right? In other words, the turtle has been through it all. The turtle has seen it all and doesn't get too wound up about much of anything. Let's just keep going, okay? Let's jump now to 2B. Of course, if we're talking about rhetoric, Steinbeck is genius. If you want to go back, for example, and study just one or two of the few similes that he will play the game with, comparisons using like or as, notice how Steinbeck elicits all of the major senses in this passage. What you can see, what you can taste, what you can touch, etc., etc. Notice his use of color. For example, just notice the very last lines. The old humorous eyes looked ahead, and the horny beak opened a little. His yellow toenails slipped a fraction in the dust. In other words, you can just see this old, old turtle trying to you know, go, Whoa, that was quite a ride I took after that truck jacked my shell, and now here I am again going off. Now, let's go ahead and say this out loud. This is an example of, of some, what we sometimes refer to as personification. To personify something non-human as if somehow it is human and it has human attributes, right, makes the turtle seem kind of like an old man of a kind, right, or an old person, we might say. Now, if we jump to level three right away, obviously we're going to write down in 3A that the primary relationship for this chapter, uh, the turtle, is obviously to the novel Grapes of Wrath, no question. 
But we're going to find other titles as well. When, for example, we play the game with the short story, Worn Path, we're going to have an old woman who is taking a journey through the woods that will kind of simulate the game that's being played here by Steinbeck. Of course, let's just point it out right away. In Microcosm, this is a story about a journey. Let's go ahead and say it out loud. Stories about journeys are often referred to as odysseys. The reason they're referred to as odysseys is because the most famous poem in the Western tradition is a poem called The Odyssey, a story about a famous hero named Odysseus, who, guess what, is an old man, who, guess what, goes through all these terrible things, who, guess what, refuses to give up and is going to find himself back to his wife Penelope and his home uh, uh, Ithaca and his young son Telemachus. That notion of the long journey as being the way that you define who you are, either as person or as family or as people, is a very ancient motif. Can you jot down for yourself what is your favorite movie about some old person who has to go on a journey? who has to go through all kinds of struggles, trials, tribulations to try to figure out exactly how he or she is going to make it. Okay? What is for you your favorite video game that plays the same game of Long Journey? Journey is the fundamental part of the game. Some of you will say, oh, that's weird. When you think about video games, they're often constructed around the idea of a long journey, aren't they? Right? And think about how that plays nicely into a video game, which is going to, by its very definition, make you play the game for a very long time to get finally to the end. And we all want to know, is the hero going to make it or not make it? Of course, the turtle is representative of the epic hero, no question. We think of Odysseus, don't we? We think of Aeneas in Virgil's Aeneid. We can think about your favorite hero. Who is your favorite hero who goes through lots and lots of trials and finally makes it to the other side of the highway, if you will, right? Somehow tries to get through all the struggles. At level 2B, of course, we can already begin to play this game of relating to a title like this. It's pretty easy to ask, when was the last time you felt like this poor turtle, right? When was the last time you were just working your can off to just try and get up the embankment? Obviously, we're speaking metaphorically here, aren't we? To just get up the embankment, but you knew full well once you got up the embankment, that's when the real hard work started because you were going to get out on a highway and you were about going to get jacked. And maybe you get jacked, and maybe you don't get jacked, and maybe you almost get jacked, like our poor turtle, and you come off to the other side, and then all of a sudden, guess what? It's just more climbing, it's just more walking, it's just more moving along. Notice the last line. His toenails slipped a little in the dust. In other words, it's not like, okay, I made it across the road, now everything's free and clear. He's got more challenges to go. What is for you? the biggest challenge that you would say? What is for you the embankment? What is for you the highway with all the dangers on the highway? What is a time in your life when you had to keep going and you wanted to quit? You wanted to get dip to be done and you, and you couldn't quit. You had to keep going. Let me ask another question that's a 3B question. The turtle in our story represents somebody old who keeps going. Who is the old person in your life that for you is the most remarkable model? Who is the old person? Do you know people like this? They're old. For example, my, a student of mine once said, dude, my grandpa, he worked on a farm, owned a farm, and he and, you know, ran the farm. He could outwork all of the 19-year-old kids who came from high school to work for him in the summer. They would be like, when do we get like a break? We need a water break. And my old grandpa, he's out there just working, and he's slinging that hay around and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I was recently talking to somebody, and they were talking about old man strength. You know what I'm talking? It, it's like these kids are on the football team. They're like doing all this weights and everything. And they go out to like haul hay for the day, right? And they're three hours into it, and they are totally dead. And this old grandpa's out there like, come on, boys, we got a lot of, we got another field to do after this. And they're like, you're kidding me. And he's like, no, look. And there's just a hay for as far as you can see. We got to get all this into the barn because to, then tomorrow we got more to do. Are you serious? Right? Who is for you the old fart that exemplifies the turtle strength? That is to say, they kind of have been made tough 
over the years, right? And because they're tough over years, they don't quit so easy. Finally, another 3B observation for you. In what ways, many have read this story as symptomatic, emblematic of a culture, the American culture. Steinbeck is celebrating in many ways the American spirit. The spirit that says, no matter how bad it gets, we don't quit. No matter how hard the journey, we don't quit. In your estimation, do you think of your country in this way? Do you take some pride in the idea that America and Americans are people who refuse to quit, who see challenges and keep working through those challenges in spite of those challenges? How do you think about your own country in regards to age? Do you think of your country as old or do you think of your country as young? Of course, we, uh, you know, if we look at dates, America is actually a very young country, right? 1776 is not that long ago. And yet, you could make the argument that the country of America has been through a lot, if you will, to continue the metaphor. The country has gone up the embankments, over the highway, got knocked around a bit, landed on their back, and had to figure out a way to get a right, and then on to the next, to the next uh, journey, right, to the next adventure. What's fascinating about this chapter is that that's all there is to it. It's just some insignificant turtle that's just doing this gig. And then Steinbeck just jumps right back into the story again, telling about the Joad family taking this long journey. And yet, it's clear that the turtle comes to represent everything about the Joad family, trying to get through all the terrible situations that are there. Well, there you go. An introduction to John Steinbeck, an introduction to Chapter 3 of Grapes of Wrath. Thank you.